gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you so much for yielding time to me. And uh, at this moment, I'd like to speak on behalf of the people that I represent, the people of the Virgin Islands. I'm thankful that this House has decided that they wanted to work in a bipartisan manner on supplemental for the disasters that have occurred, the unprecedented disasters that have occurred in the Virgin Islands. And I did hear the voice of so many of my colleagues who said that they would be willing to do whatever was necessary to support the people of the Virgin Islands. But right now, as I stand here, people of the Virgin Islands, well, almost 60% of them still do not have power. I have no power in my own home. And those of you in Florida and in Texas and in other places would not stand for that. But you expect us to stand for it. We're supposed to muddle through. We're only supposed to have hope this Christmas of what's supposed to come. Well, Mr. Speaker, you can have hope at your Christmas dinner because you've got some lights on. My house, I'll go empty too. It'll be gold and it'll be dark there until my husband or I crank up the generator and get it going for a couple of hours so that maybe we can wash, cook some food, and turn it back off again later in the day. Today, I'm urging my colleagues to vote no on H.R. 4667, not because I don't want supplemental support, not because the people of the Virgin Islands don't need it, but because I understand that I have said when this measure was unveiled that the funding in this bill is woefully insufficient and it has not improved since that time. This measure provides only $81 billion to be split between Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, other places, and if history is any indication, that money is not gonna get to the people of the Virgin Islands. Because while the California delegation and the Texas delegation can lobby in late hours to get what they need in the bill, I'm the only person from the Virgin Islands here to support the people of the Virgin Islands. And not only do I not get invited to those negotiations, I don't even have a floor when the bill that comes to providing for the people that I represent comes on this floor. One of the things that is noticeably absent from this disaster package is funding for Medicaid programs. The same type of funding that was put in in discussions for Katrina for the people of Texas and Louisiana. The government of the Virgin Islands cannot shoulder the current burden of the local matching requirements for Medicaid funding, which the government of the Virgin Islands has recently submitted to be 64 million and an additional 50 million. The government of the Virgin Islands has respectfully requested that the Medicaid provisions, that the cap be removed, the arbitrary cap be removed for us for the period of time for us to be stabilized and for 100% the same way it was for Katrina in other places be, be given to us. Now, the people of the Virgin Islands, the people of Puerto Rico, I know it may be news to many people, but we are U.S. citizens. We decide to live on an island because that's where we were brought. Ask for one additional mission. Thank you. Additional minute. And because of that, we have been treated disproportionately and dis disfairly in the ways that some of these funding has come about. In addition, the bill does not include important local cost share waivers for the Virgin Islands and contains unnecessary limitations on the ability of the Virgin Islands to use federal assistance to rebuild with more resilience. Furthermore, the Virgin Islands cannot wait for the community development funds provided in this bill. HUD should immediately award community development funds to the Virgin Islands on the damage assessments that have been completed. Those are things that I can get around. Those are real support in a real bill that is really working in a bipartisan way to pe help all Americans, not just delegations who can get together in the heat of the night, in the cold of the night, and make provisions for themselves, leaving those of us. I've told my colleagues on this side of the aisle, they're gonna pick off Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, we're gonna be left out, and some of you are gonna get what you want, and you're gonna vote for this, and once again, the people who have no vote on this floor, the people who have no say in this country, although they are U.S. citizens, are going to be left out. So I'm urging all of my colleagues to vote no. I yield back. Gentlemen from.